Today our virtual bus tour ventures to the irrigated canelands of the Burdekin Delta. We're here to see how growers are using automation technology to reduce their water usage and also minimise runoff which could end up in the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. Willie Lucas is doing the rounds of his farm at Osborne just outside of Home Hill. These blocks are flood irrigated with a flume and cup system and he's checking to make sure water reached the end of each row overnight. Well, the whole idea of what we're doing here is that in flood irrigation, as the water's coming down, we can't tell that everyone's down. So we've got to go along and to check each individual ones to make sure that they're all down. Without that happening, uh, we're, we're unsure. So it's um, productive to make sure everything gets watered and everything's irrigated. Any excess water actually drains into a recycling pit, but that still means more was being pumped than needed and water running off cane land can carry nutrients that are then lost to the crop. Soon though, this block will be part of an automation system. These are 12 hour sets and the whole thing with automation is that you can improve that in hours and length of times that it's running for. These have been coming down in eight hours after the rain. A huge amount of wasted water there when you talk about if you, if you didn't know it was gonna come down in eight hours. We've had two to three hours extra that it's been running, that it could have been turned off and, and all that electricity and that water all saved, not run into the recycle pit and not having to be double pumped. Years in the creation, the new automated irrigation and telemetry system could be an industry game changer for growers relying on flood irrigation. Seed funding through Project Catalyst and the Australian Government Reef Program was crucial in developing the concept and undertaking field trials. The results were obvious. The automation system uses less water, less electricity and less labour. It was to do with workload. I had too much to do. I, I'm running here 190 or so hectares, uh, doing it by myself, my wife and I, and we're very time shy uh, because in an irrigated system, 80% uh, of our work is irrigation. So when you've got 80% of your work being irrigation, that's a lot of extra work that you don't have to do if you can get into telemetry. Central to the automated irrigation and telemetry system is a series of remotely controlled butterfly valves housed at T-junctions on the irrigation line. At each T-piece there are two linear actuators. When one opens water is channelled onto the block being irrigated and when it closes the other valve opens to channel water further down the line. We have a radio controller here which is powered by the little batteries as you see in the box. The aerial goes to a gateway which I have up in my house and then we've got two actuators and a valve. I mean this whole system here to add a valve per T-piece is around about $2,200. Uh, actuators are alone uh, $400 $500 each. The valve design uses a combination of smart technology and old-fashioned on-farm ingenuity. We've got two linear actuators. They're powered by 12 volt battery control. They're very robust. Uh, they're, lint, they're made by Linark, uh, good quality. They're IP67, which is waterproof, which is pretty good stuff. All the, uh, the bracketry on the valves are all sort of homemade. Uh, anyone can make them up, but we have got them drawn up on laser uh, plant work, so anyone else can use them if they wish. But this is good, robust hardware that's going to last for years, the way it's going, um, all set up. Ultimately, it's the EORs or end of row sensors that the system relies on to deliver water and electricity savings and to reduce that risk of runoff. In flood irrigation systems, knowing when water reaches the end of the row makes all the difference. Right, yeah, this is uh, an end of row sensor, we call it an EOR. Uh, we have two, um, two wires that come off it and what the wires are for, when one gets wet or the other gets wet, it'll send a signal back to the, to the main base station. Um, and then after that it'll come back to the valves which is over there and then all everything the whole system starts to operate without this um, you've got to go on a time situation and time situation is not the best whereas with, with, with the EOR when the water gets there the whole system starts to happen without the EOR you're just estimating when the actual water is going to get there and for it to turn over. The telemetry system uses a low-cost LoRaWAN or low-powered wide area network to communicate data back and forth between the radio controlled valves and a gateway at the house. Data is communicated to a server and the entire system is driven by a computer app 
accessible on a smartphone or tablet anywhere in the world and anywhere on the farm. Oh, this here is my uh, all the sensors that I've got. So if we go through, you've got these are EORs, which is end of row sensors. We've got EOR 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. The telemetry system is connected to a switchboard at the pump unit where a submersible electric pump is controlled by an energy efficient variable speed drive. What we've got here is um, the new Franklin energy efficient pumps, VSD drives, radio telemetry. That, that telemetry controls all of the pumping systems. I either stop it here, it's just to show you, you can hear it humming away, and we, we sort of stop our sequence. It'll send a signal through, ask me again, OK, stop. And the whole advantage of this, this here is still the same thing. It's powered by batteries, powered by a solar panel, and um, that's if mains go down, we've still got the battery backup. That can send a signal out. Software development in particular has proven to be a challenge, and Willie has teamed up with Cairns startup WaterSave to take the automation system from concept to reality. My whole project aim originally was to build a low cost, affordable system for cane farmers because there wasn't one on the market at the time when I first started looking at this. It was a low cost system. I believe that this system is actually affordable to present day cane farmers. Because there wasn't, when we first started, there wasn't a system designed for flood irrigation. Willie is expecting dividends to flow in terms of reduced electricity costs. With that comes an environmental dividend in reducing the use of precious water in a region that depends on irrigation. When you're talking about megaliths a hectare, we're in a very extremely high water use area. When I first started farming, we were using around 40, 45 megs a hectare. We're currently down around about that 20, 25. I can foresee with this system, what I've noticed across a quarter of my farm, I cannot see why we can't get it down to 15 at the bare minimum, which is really good for a delta irrigated system. So you're going from 20, 25 down to 15 megs a hectare, that's a big saving uh, on water and electricity and the labour that goes with it. Cutting down on water use also reduces the risk of nutrient and chemical running off farms and into the Great Barrier Reef catchment during flood irrigation cycles. The ability to closely monitor irrigation sets immediately after nutrient application is a particular benefit of the automated system. That's why originally Project Catalyst actually got involved was because of the nitrogen, the, the use, the, 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 the runoff of the nitrogen going to the Great Barrier Reef. We thought, well, if we can stop any water especially on those first irrigations, that's the most important one. So if you can set your EORs to turn off prematurely when the very first water hits there, straight away, that you don't get that runoff of that nitrogen leaving or leaching on that first irrigation or that second irrigation, which is your main one. Another saving Willie is sure to make is on paperwork. He's a smart cane BMP accredited grower and knows the importance of record keeping in managing his farm. All of his irrigation data is uploaded automatically, stored on the server and accessible on his tablet or smartphone. So if you can do it automatically or automatically, I think that it's already done and that's what this system's done, doing. It time stamps when your pump starts, when it stops. Each set will have a time stamp on it so it's not going to be a, a paddock level, it'll be an irrigation set level that you'll have when that was irrigated, how many megalitres that set used. I mean. If that doesn't tick off on a, on a BNP accreditation, nothing ever will. Willie is looking forward to the day when his entire farm is under an automated irrigation system. It'll mean more family time, more time to focus on farm improvements, and the peace of mind that he's doing his best to keep nutrient where it needs to be, in the soil, growing top quality sugar cane. Right at the current moment, I've got a quarter of my farmed area under automation, and when it comes to starting that, I, I don't even drive around that farm anymore. I start the pumps with my tablet, that's it. I, I, all I've got to do is concentrate on the manual systems. Uh, and after having that happen in the Delta, which is, I reckon it's so, so amazing, if I could put that across the rest of my farming systems, well, I, I will actually be able to concentrate on doing the things that save money, I could build all my own implements again, I can do so much more that I don't get time to do now because we're forever running around irrigating.